When I was in nursing school, I got really sick. Strange symptoms ranging from GI to neuro. I took my final exam with an NG tube in my nose. It was a mystery. Whenever we would learn about some new rare disease, I would joke and say that's probably what I had. Anyway, I kept presenting to the ER with severe abdominal pain and syncope as my main complaints. The doctor said, you're fine, it's stress. Once school is done, you'll be all better. But I wasn't. I got worse. Once I started training, I had started to lose a lot of weight. The pain persisted, and I also started to feel like a hypochondriac and crazy. I started to think maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I'm just not able to deal with a job that had so many responsibilities. I felt like a failure. I felt sick. I felt like no one cared. I felt like it was something wrong with me emotionally. The doctors told me it probably was. There was nothing wrong. I was stressed, anxious, and probably depressed until I was finally hospitalized and a female doctor I had worked with came in almost questioning why I had come back again. I can only imagine what was in my chart at that point. She sat with me and reviewed my symptoms and I told her I felt like I was gonna die, but no one was listening. She listened to me and ran tests and I was in an adrenal crisis and I was diagnosed with Addison's disease. I felt like I was dying because I was. I was not crazy. I had a very rare and life-threatening medical condition. I was so thankful that this doctor saved my life and gave me answers. Then I became angry. Why didn't anyone listen? Why had the doctors felt more comfortable calling it stress than actually investigating? According to Duke Health, one in five women say they have felt that a healthcare provider has ignored or dismissed their symptoms and 17% say they feel they have been treated differently because of their gender. Unintentional gender bias is real. In an article on the website bbc.com, it states, women are told it's most likely in their heads and wait longer for a diagnosis, sometimes years. Diagnostic errors account for 40,000 to 80,000 deaths per year. For me, it took almost three. The last time could have been the very last time my body was shutting down. My name is Stephanie Thatcher. I am a registered nurse. This topic is a very personal one to me, as a woman, as a nurse, and as a patient. I have experienced all sides of this healthcare issue. In this speech, I will talk about the history of gender bias, how women's complaints of illness and pain are managed differently than men's, and going forward, how healthcare can allow for a change to happen. Unintentional gender bias against women is the unintentional and or dismissive treatment of women in the healthcare setting. Throughout history, healthcare has revolved around men with everything from testing medications, treatments, and equipment. It all has been geared towards men. Women's complaints of illness and pain are managed differently. Men are thought to be stronger and women are thought to be emotional. Gender specific education of healthcare providers is necessary to make this long overdue change. Fun fact. Did you know the testing of things like medication for women was tested only on men? Young white males to be exact. This goes back to the lab as well. Animals tested were also male because they're easier to study, according to an article on drugswatch.com. This article also states that until 1988, even though 80% of medications were used by women, new drugs were tested mostly by males. This article uses acetaminophen or Tylenol as an example. It states, according to studies done, it takes 60% longer for the drug to leave the system of a woman. This puts women at higher risk for overdose and liver failure. The FDA and Johnson & Johnson have not made a warning or changed the dosage for women. President Clinton signed into effect the NIH Revitalization Act in 1993. This included women in studies that were federally funded. Are women's bodies more complex? It's an archaic belief that men are strong and women are emotional. While watching a TED Talk by Colleen Arnold, she brings this up. She states because of this, men are more likely to receive pain medication for pain and women are more likely to receive sedatives because they're emotional and men are tough. Women are different from men, right down to the cells in their bodies. The first time I had heard of a difference in recognition of this was in 2004. The American Heart Association had launched the Go Red campaign for women. 
This program brought awareness to women's health. The effort to eliminate unnecessary deaths from strokes and heart attacks in women. The guidelines for cardiac symptoms and treatments were changed to include symptoms such as abdominal pain. This still remains the leading cause of death among American women. Even though it's been 15 years, we are still learning. How can anything change? In order for anything to change, we need to address education starting at the top. Companies need to test products used by women on women. Providers need to be educated differently to include the care of women separately from men. And finally, as women, we need to educate ourselves about our health and advocate for ourselves and our needs. This issue is starting to get recognition with the ever-evolving support of women's rights with movements like Me Too that really illuminate this topic. Institutions such as Cedar sinai have started to embrace this culture and have taken some important steps to change. And the American Heart Association is revamping the Go Red campaign. Now, more than ever, we're starting to see a turn in the tides. We're hopefully heading in the right direction. The history of unintentional gender bias against women is a long one. The way women's complaints of illness and pain are managed in women is starting to change. Talking about these issues, education and advocacy, the only ways that change can continue. Unintentional gender bias is a real problem, but we are starting to see change slowly. Women need to know that they have rights and a voice to be heard. Providers need to change the way that they think and really listen. Women, you know your bodies best. Be heard. And to the providers, really listen. It's really that simple.